two great speakers this morning uh, that I think you'll really enjoy hearing from. Uh, Barbara Simmons and Scott Simon. You know, if you, if you travel around the country and you know, have the opportunity to do business in two other states, and it's amazing the quality of leaders we have in Arkansas. We have some exceptional leaders in Arkansas. If you go into other states and you're looking for those same type of leaders, you have to go pretty deep to find some. And, and there's some really great things in Arkansas. Arkansas. We have two of my favorite this morning. And I think will be your favorite at the end of the day. And Mark and Scott. Uh, I want to thank Ted Belden for uh, allowing us to uh, be in this building. This is a great building. Ted and old buildings. Ted has helped. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, Ted. Kind of like we're in a shower. It feels like we're in a shower. <laughs> and we always want to be thankful and consider Ted's holdings because he came in and, and put some capital on the market after the downturn. As we talked about last month, that was not insignificant. And he deserves your support. And uh, the Dixon, uh, New York Bowl, Inicarm Hall, this building, the uh, uh, EJ Ball building, anything else you want to mention, Ted? Fulbright Library. Fulbright Library, here you go. Great, we're grateful to Ted. And seriously. <laughs> uh, we want to uh, be thankful that Bootsy's here from uh, Senator Wong's office. Thank you, Bootsy, for coming. Uh, Bobby Jones of, of our sponsor, Condon Winters. We're going to introduce someone else from Condon Winters. Thank you, Bobby, for being here. Thank you for being a sponsor. Your um, we also want to recognize Terry Delaney and Alex Foster, two of the newest members of the CEO Forms. Thank you all for joining. We look forward to having you all in the CEO Forum 2 and 1. Uh, Ethan Inlander from the Nature Conservancy. Ethan, thank you. And uh, uh, I'll introduce Bob and uh, John in just a minute. So I did want to mention that if you uh, look back at the last 40, 50 years, it's worthy of considering. I remember growing up with my father who worked for Arkansas Power and Light and later was a banker. We talked a lot about economic development and job creation at the dinner table growing up. And there's probably no industry that could get more for Arkansas creating jobs in the poultry industry. 60s and 70s, 80s, and, uh, and we just always need to be thankful of people like Mark and Tyson's and, and the whole industry for uh, all that they did to create jobs and pretty difficult. It wasn't too easy right in the 60s and 70s, wasn't Mark? It's hard times. Yeah. It was a, we were grinding it out, I think, pretty much. So we love getting people together in forums like this so we can learn. Something that we've enjoyed doing since we came back to Arkansas, the Arkansas Venture Forums, forum to celebrate Arkansas, help, help uh, uh, enterprises uh, get started and grow more. And uh, so we, we really uh, look forward to this series and building on it. We'll have about 10 speaker series, uh, 10 speakers a year in this series. And uh, we look forward to uh, your nominees of speakers. So if you have ideas on some good speakers, uh, we did give you a handout uh, related to those speakers. Okay, I want to share a couple things with you. So, I uh, just want to touch on what we're doing with an elevator. We're working to increase our value proposition. And we did some surveys and CEO forums about what we learned from the prior decade and then how we can go forward differently in the next decade. And one of the things we learned in the downturn is we really need to have a high value proposition to hold our clients and uh, something that we all think and talk a lot about. What's our value proposition? Finally, <coughs> customers, so we're trying to take that to heart in our own enterprise. And we've been working pretty hard to increase the value proposition to the marketplace and we hope you all will find that. Um, what are we doing today? The CEO forums, we have three CEO forums, which are CEOs and C-level executives. We're beginning key forums, uh, which is key persons. That will start in April. We have one, maybe two, already formed, about eight, eight people per forum. And uh, that will be a four-month uh, curriculum, so to speak, and we'll each go through a, a, an issue. We'll keep and kind of learn how to go through some real thorough uh, issue uh, issue attack and try to more robustly take that issue, get a lot of questions, enjoy the collective wisdom of the diverse group and the competition. <coughs> so that's, that's what we hope to do in April. The Elevate Speaker Series is what we're doing this morning. 
We were working on the CEO Forum Standing Conference, which is going to be going to sign the lease next week uh, to uh, reserve the Great Hall at the Crystal Bridges. That's May 18th. Mark that down. It's, it is by invitation only. I think we have 200 slots. And we have, we think, we're 99% sure we have Stephanie Corella from Vice President of Apple agreed to come. Friend of Michael Skinner, who's a friend of uh, Wayne Callahan, is not. We're asking Wayne and maybe Sarah Lilligren to be our master ceremonies. We think we'll accomplish that. And uh, we think we will have Jim Myers from the CEO Forums, who founded the CEO Forums, a form of CEO of two public health companies. And, uh, and then a Goldman Sachs, uh, Joe Brothers, is going to help us bring in someone from Goldman Sachs to speak on the, the energy sector. Off in shale, all this going on in South Arkansas, low gas prices. There's a lot to discuss in that. And then Mike, uh, Jim Myers, and I will try to get Mike Ahern to come, a friend of mine of his, uh, who is the CEO of First Solar. Don't know that he can do that because if you looked at the solar industry, it's a lot like the poultry industry. It's a struggle. Sometimes we'll 
think we're going here, but we'll become so aware that, that we're kind of enlightened and we said, no, that's why we're here. So you kind of become, you know, have a little more robust view of where you're going and you can make adjustments and you'd be just, just maybe more intelligent about how you tap the market. Um, so another one from Jim Myers, we must develop this has to do with business model evolution. A proprietary distinguishable position in the marketplace. Now, if I were to vote who we all going to be in this forum this morning, he would say a proprietary position in the marketplace. That's evolved over the years. It's harder to have a distinguishable position in the marketplace. Uh, but you can do that. And uh, if, you, uh, if you think about Walmart, it had a distinguishable position as a low cost provider. But over the years, what did it do? It became very good at logistics and uh, inventory management and it had some proprietary. So you, over time, you, you might to build in some proprietary things. So even if you're a low-cost provider or, or a distinguishable kind of business model, it's worthy of trying to pursue the proprietary. In my case, that may be software for service for some of these toolboxes. Uh, and then you're either a low-cost provider or a value-added provider. I think that is kind of important to think about your businesses. Alex and I had a good sit-down about whether he goes after the downhill market or the uh, power electronics market. For automobiles, the power electronics market for automobiles, he's got to become a low cost provider. So maybe we license that. Uh, you know, we'll continue to talk about it.